Hey guys, today we're going to get started learning GIMP, so let's just jump right in. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go up to File and open your image. So you'll go down to Open. Let me just close this one and we can reopen it. So close all. We'll go up to File and we'll go to Open. And then you'll go to where your photos are located. Mine is located on my desktop, so I'll click Desktop and I can click the photos and you can see a preview over here in your right so I'm gonna work on this one I always suggest like your first photo be a high quality image um, this is gonna ask me if I want to change uh, the embedded color profile I'm just gonna go ahead and convert the image to the RGB working space for GIMP just so that it's compatible with the program I don't have any issues with it all right, so here's our image. So the very first thing that you're going to want to do, you're going to want to go up to colors, go to desaturate, and you can adjust these if you want, and it kind of changes them a little bit. Some of them are a little harder to see than others, but I just leave it where it's at. It's desaturated. That's just making sure that there's no embedded colors that we're not seeing. Sometimes it, it can trick you and make you think that it's black and white and it'll have a little um, blue tint to it or a little bit of a tan tint to it that we don't, just don't pick up real well, but it can affect your colors. So you want to make sure that's done. Secondly, let's address your toolbars over here. Yours probably do not look anything like this. They probably look something like this with your layers down here. So, to get your toolbars on the right, kind of how I have mine set up, you will go up to Windows, Dockable Dialogs. For the one down on the bottom where it shows her image here, you're going to go to um, Navigation, and that will actually create this navigation bar. It'll actually show up up here, though, as a little bitty thing, and you can just take it and click it and pull it down, like if I did this one here, and it will click it down here but I want mine up here okay so that's gonna make my navigation bar here and what I did was there was the one here for levels and I just pulled it over and docked it on the side so that I could see all of these at the same time so the other one is going to be under dockable dialogues and it's gonna be colors and that's this dialog box here so you'll go from here and just click here and this allows you to have all your colors so the next thing we need to do is address the levels. We've got a lot of brightness here and we want to make sure our level's right. It's something you do with every image before you even start coloring it. So we're going to go to our levels and have a look. And they don't look too off, to be honest. Um, I do kind of want to adjust the brightness some because it's going to help my skin color show through. So I'm going to pull this middle and that's my mid-tones. So this is your, your deep shadows, your blacks and things like this. This right here is going to be your highlights and this right here is going to be those mid-tones. So this is going to be like if you have pull this you can see those mid-tones getting darker. I don't want them too dark but I do want her skin color to be able to show up really well. So we're going to do it kind of kind of right there. So when I get that set to where I want it, I would just push OK, and that's going to get me started coloring. The next thing I would do with this image, we don't need it because we started out with a high quality image because we're learning a new program, but the next thing I would, would address would be any damage to the image. So the next thing I would do, if there was any, would be to fix any cracks, creases, spots, things like that. And then I would be all set to color. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to do just go up to your la layer at the top of your toolbar, go to new layer, and yours probably says something along the lines of normal, I believe. You're going to scroll down, scroll, scroll, scroll until you see soft light, and you're going to click soft light. We're going to push OK. Layers is the, the, you never color on your original image, you always color on layers. And this gives you the ability to turn it on or off. Um, so if you do something you don't like it, you can always turn that layer off and not see it. And it's kind of like stacking. So each item will have its own layer. So her shirt will have its own layer, her skin tones, her eyes, each one will have its own layer. So that I can affect each one separately. And that will kind of make more sense as we go. 
So the first thing we're going to do is go over here to your brush and you're going to click that. Okay, so these things down here are your like brush size, the hardness of your brush, the force of your brush, how you want it, how you want it to do. Okay, so your navigation panel over here on the right, you're going to go to the area you want to color, and I'm going to kind of start with her eyes. And I do things a little different. I'm kind of going to teach this a lot like how I teach the Beginner's Guide to Photoshop. So this is going to be like Beginner's Guide to GIMP. And I teach it a little bit different than I actually color myself. And the reason I do that is because this was kind of how I taught myself how to use Photoshop. Because I would watched a video somewhere and I took a little here and a little there. And I was like, you know, I wonder if you could do it this way. And I, I was able to. So what I do a little bit differently than some people is I pick a very bright, brilliant color to start out with. And I like this neon pink because you can see it everywhere. It doesn't matter where you color on this picture, you're going to be able to see it. You can do bright, bright green, bright blue, whatever's easiest on your eyes to see. But I don't actually pick the color I'm going to use. And the reason behind that is, is because it's easy, like skin tones, it's easy to miss spots. And with this bright pink, it's easier to see and you don't miss as much. So I want to get my brush a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to scroll, not that small. I'm going to scroll down, up, about like that. And I've got this bright pink selected and I'm just going to start coloring her eyes. And I'm sorry if this is a little quick and dirty, guys. It's just me kind of showing you how I do it. And like I said, I don't really know anyone else that does this this way, but, and this is how I started out learning. I don't color this way more now. I kind of pick the colors I want and everything. But as you get, you know, as you're first starting out, sometimes it's a little confusing. It's easier not to have to sit and go through all the colors and pick the ones you want. Or at least it was for me. I found that very frustrating trying to get the exact color I want, and then it didn't look right, and I would feel like I had to start all over on that layer, and you really don't. So I've got her eyes colored. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Colors, and I'm going to go to Hue and Saturation. Okay. So we know we don't want her eyes hot pink fuchsia. So if I go to this where it says hue right here and I start pulling that or I can use my arrows here it's gonna start changing her eye color and I can adjust how light or dark and her eyes are pretty dark. So as I pull that down it darkens her eyes and I can even turn the saturation down some so that it doesn't look like bright or, or orange or brown or whatever color you decide to use. And I want them a little lighter than that. Not a whole lot. And so when I get the color that I like, I'm going to push OK. So let's kind of zoom out and have a look at her eyes. Not that far out winner. So that really doesn't look bad. It's a little bright. So if I wanted to adjust that a little more without having to go back into hue and saturation, I can actually, because I've selected this later, if I turn it off, you don't see it, but you can actually take your opacity down some and it not make them as brilliant. When I get that where I kind of where I want it, I go to layer and start a new layer. And I'm going to kind of blend some colors in here because nobody's eyes are all one solid color. So I'm just going to go in now that I've created a new layer. I'm over here. I'm just going to kind of go in. Oh, not what I wanted to do. Make sure I created a new layer. Layer, new layer. Softlight light and oh, there we are. Why is it trying to still put me in hue and saturation? I'm really not sure on that. Hold on. 
me and Gimp are having issues. Okay, really not sure. Delete layer. So there's our brown layer. Let's try this again. New layer. Soft light. Push OK. Go back to our brush. Maybe that's where I was messing up. I wouldn't go to the brush. See, even people that use it can make mistakes. And I'm just going to kind of go around her pupil some on both because you can see there's some fringing there. Everybody kind of has that little fringing. And then I'm going to go up, go to colors, go to hue and saturation. And I'm just going to drag and adjust that some. And I'm just going to try to help that blend so it doesn't look so rough. So see there, it kind of starts blending in some. I'm going to actually probably pull the lightness up just a, a bit. Not that much. And I just want to help that blend. So you can do as many layers as you want on the eyes. I tend to go, look at me. I'm trying to do like I regularly color y'all. Okay, so we're going to go back to our pink. And I want to take my brush size down. And I just, a lot more than that. Maybe about a four. And I just want to touch in some of these lighter spots. I don't want anything real solid. Just kind of, kind of mixing them in there. Okay. And so then I'm going to go to colors. You in saturation. And I'm going to adjust this. And I kind of want like some little gold maybe. Little gold flakes. Not really yellow, but kind of a, a gold. And kind of not real light. And I don't want it highly saturated. And sometimes this works and it looks great. And sometimes it looks kind of crazy. So you just kind of have to play with it. I'll push OK. And I'm going to actually take the opacity down just a, just a hair. All right. And I'm going to do one more layer on her eyes, guys. I know this is getting old, but that's what we're going to do. I keep trying to color over there. <laughs> so I'm just, I want to take the softness down of my brush. So I'm going to go to the hardness and I'm going to kind of pull this down some. I don't want it that real harsh edge. And I want my brush a little bigger. Not that big. A little bit less. And I actually am going to turn the opacity down just a hair. And I'm just going to kind of color over all of it. And sometimes this works real well. Sometimes it don't. A lot of coloring is just kind of playing with it and seeing how it turns out. So we're going to go to colors. We're going to go to hue and saturation. And I just kind of want to play with this a little bit and kind of see where, where it takes me. I don't want a lot of saturation. I know that. I just want something that kind of pulls it a little, pulls it all together some. And then I kind of want to back out and have a have a look. And that looks a little more realistic than just a solid color. You can kind of see the different shades in her eyes. So we are done with her eyes. Yay! So the next thing I'm going to do is start a new layer. We're still on our soft light. You're going to stay on the soft light really with just about everything. And we're going to start doing her skin tone. So we're going to go back to our brush. I'm going to turn my hardness back up some. Not a whole lot, but up some. And I'm going to make sure I turn my opacity back up, because if not, I'm not going to be able to see it. 
I want to turn my brush size up because her face is, you know, her skin tone is a fairly large area. And I'm just going to color her face. Yeah. Make sure I'm at the top of the image. There's been many a time I've colored a picture and got done and realized that I forgot to scroll and half the picture was not colored. That's not a fun experience when you figure this out. So make sure you scroll. It'll save you a lot of time and effort in the long run. I promise you. These are a lot of mistakes that you learn when you first color and you're like, man, I can't believe I did that. And then you're like, yeah, I kind of can. So we're just going to color. Her face. And I just usually just go over the eyebrows. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I do them separate. Depends. When they're blonde, you don't want to do that because they can really look kind of orange when you get done. But you can kind of start seeing what I'm talking about, about it being easier to see when you miss spots. And there are days that when I'm having trouble and I just keep missing spots that I will still go back to this because I'm like, it's just easier to see. And I'm getting older. So we're going to color her neck. Make sure we scroll down to get all of her neck. Right, and I'm going to take my brush size down a little bit and my hardness up when I get to the ears because I want the ears, <laughs> you're going to need some sharp lines when you get close to the hair. And you want it to be kind of small. You don't want to go over a whole lot like I'm doing. I to undo. I'm going to take my brush down some more. I can always zoom in. Yay. So we want to zoom in and get, and I'm not too worried about the hair because it's not going to show up on the hair. Her hair's dark. Now if her hair was blonde, I would have to worry about that a little more because it would affect her hair color there. But that hardness gives you a sharp, clean edge so that you don't have a lot of bleed over with your color. It's not bleeding out into areas that it's not supposed to be there. Okay. Since we can kind of see her ear, I want to make sure I get these areas. Okay get the bottom of her ear and that's actually looking pretty good Ooh, too zoomed let's zoom back out and some more so I make sure we got all of her skin tone I'm just gonna go ahead and color this up here it's not bad um, and then I'm gonna take this opacity down and kind of otherwise we're gonna have a real sharp edge at her hairline and trust me you don't want to do that. And I'm going to take my brush up some. A little bit more. And if you take the opacity down, it kind of helps it blend in her hair without looking real sharp. Make sure you got all of her eyebrows. Around her mouth, good. Okay. So, when you get her all colored, then you're just going to go back the same way hue and saturation and you're going to adjust for skin tone. Skin tone's a little harder and you kind of need to know what color families you want to be in. I like to do myself personally and everybody's a little bit different. I personally like to do oranges and reds and kind of kind of mix the two. A little more yellowy orange I guess. 
And so I want to take the saturation down because, you know, we're not fake bake orange. And that's actually not bad. And when I get it to where I want, I'm going to push OK. And to give her a little more dimension, what I'll do is I'll go up to this layer 4, which is her skin tone that we're on right now. I will right click it, duplicate that layer, and then I'm going to go and go up to colors, hue and saturation. And I want this one somewhere in the red family, I think. I think I may already miss the red family. Let me go back. There we go. And so I want to turn the saturation way down because we don't want red people. And I'm going to turn her lightness up. And I'm going to just kind of try to blend these two layers together to get a good, healthy, realistic skin tone. And to me, that, that looks actually pretty good. So let's zoom out. Because sometimes the shadows will affect you. Not that far out. So one thing I don't like about this is it's a little bit harder to tell how far zoomed in and out you are on this. But... Okay, so that's really not bad. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer. And we're going to address her waterline. So I need to zoom back into her eyes. And this is going to take a very small brush. Very, 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 very small. A little bit bigger. And I want it just about the size of her waterline here. And so I'm going to start painting that. And I want the opacity down on this because I don't want it to be like a bright, <laughs> bright neon line. It doesn't need to be a bright, <laughs> harsh line because it's going to be harder to blend. I'll do a little bit in here. And then I'm going to go to her other eye. And I'm going to do basically the same thing. And I didn't re really get good in here on her skin tone. I thought I did, but I didn't. And so I'll have to address that. So the next thing we're going to do is push colors, hue saturation, and we're going to adjust this. And a lot of what we're going to do here is turn the saturation down because they're not bright pink. We're going to turn your lightness up and then I turn it more to a reddish type. And that doesn't look bad. So I don't know if I like that yet. So I want to kind of zoom out and look at it and it looks pretty realistic. Doesn't look real bad. And I can be happy with that. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and get her shirt out of the way next because it's one of the bigger parts and I like to do the bigger parts first. So, soft light, push OK, and we're going to go to her shirt. Make sure we're scrolled all the way down and go to our brush. And we're going to turn our opacity back up. And her shirt's a pretty good size, so we can keep our brush size a pretty good size, too. I'm going to turn it down a little bit on this side because it's a little small. It's got a little smaller areas that I'm going to want to get into. And I'm just going to make sure I color all that. A 
let's say if I get over in her skin tone like this, like what do you do? Like how do you fix that? It's real easy. All you have to do is go right next to your brush and you're going to have an eraser there and you just erase where you don't want that to be. And you can even get in smaller and zoom in and make sure you get it exactly how you want it to be. And I see a spot that I've missed. Okay. So I could leave her shirt that color, but I really, I can't. So I'm going to go to hue and saturation and I'm just going to start adjusting for the color. And I kind of want to go on the other end and I see a spot I missed. I need to go back and fix that. Okay. Same thing. Color, hue, saturation. And like I said, this is not how most people teach it, but it's kind of the way I do it because repetition helps you remember things. And so if you're doing it around the same every single time, you're going to remember, oh yeah, well that's how I do that. It helps. Trust me. And I kind of like that color. I think I want to turn the saturation up a little more though. Maybe the darkness down. And I kind of like that color. So I'm going to go with that one. All right. So the next thing we need to do is her lips. So we're going to start a new layer. We're going to be on soft light. Push OK. And go to your brush. And we are going to zoom in onto her lips. Okay, so we want to check and see about what our brush size is, and it's really too big for these areas, so we're going to want to turn it down some. About like that. So we're just going to go and start coloring her lips. And I really probably should be using a softer brush here. And the reason is is so that we don't get those harsh lines that it likes to put on the lips. Let me turn my harsh, harshness down a little bit. And I could even turn the opacity down. But I may do that as a, a layer itself. So we're just going to go in and finish coloring these. But if you will see, now that line doesn't look as harsh as it does up here. And we're just going to go in and color all of this as far as her lips go. It's not bad. All right. We're going to go up to colors, hand saturation. And I know my pinks and my reds are kind of down on this end. And we've got some overflow here, and it doesn't look real great. So... I'm going to turn my saturation down a little bit. Not that much. And I can actually clean that line up some. Push OK. And so I'm just going to go to my eraser. And I'm actually going to turn the opacity down on the eraser some so that it makes it a little more of a smooth transition. And sometimes this works great, sometimes it does not. Okay. All right. And I still have that little spot in the color in her skin, and I can go in and fix that. So we're going to start a new layer. Okay. Go back. And I'm just going to kind of touch up around her lips somewhere and see them graze and the honest god truth as far as I'm zooming in nobody else would probably see them but it bothers me so I'm going to try to fix them sometimes this doesn't work but we're going to try it anyways so we're going to go to colors here in saturation and we're going to adjust for this so we're going to go all the way down here and we know we used red tones and oranges well 
RNG tones. So we're going to take our saturation down and we're just going to try to blend this. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it does need to blend. So we're going to turn the lightness up a little bit. And then we went up here and changed the opacity some. So I'm going to pull the opacity down. I still see spots of mist, but that's going to have to do. But you can't tell as much now where I went through and edited. All right, so we're going to back out. And our picture is already looking phenomenal. It's looking very nice. So the next thing we're going to do is create a new layer. We're almost done, guys. And we're going to dress our hair. So let me back out a little more. All right. And so I can go to my brush. I can make my brush a little bigger because there's a lot of hair there. And I can just start coloring her hair. It's a few, few small, small strands, and it's not too bad, but I want to, I want to change the opacity down on some of that, because it's, okay, and then we can turn our opacity back up. Not yet. Because I kind of want to get these, I don't like that. Turn my opacity down a little bit more. Now we're going to go in and catch these right here by her hairline. Okay. And that actually doesn't look bad. So I think I'm going to have an area right here that I'm not going to like. But we're going to we're going to play with it and see. So we're going to go up to colors, hand saturation. And this is Nina Dubrai. And her hair is actually brown. Like a deep, deep, deep brown, almost black. So I'm going to take the lightness out of her hair. And see if I can get it to darken some. And that's actually, turn the saturation down a little bit. That's actually not bad for her hair. And it it's not too bad here. All right. I do see a little spot in her eyebrow, so we're going to create a new layer. I do want to address that. And when you do eyebrows, eyebrows are real funny. You do not want a lot of hard, harshness, hardness. And you want your opacity down kind of low because if you don't, you're going to look like you've got Spock eyebrows or you drew them on with a magic marker. So we just kind of want to fill these in a little bit. Not real heavy, very light, just, just a light touch. We're going to kind of go and do this other one. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing in saturation. We know we want them in the browns. We're at red. We're getting close to the browns. Did I miss them? It's kind of orangey. About there. So I want to turn the lightness all the way down. And that helped them blend a little bit, but I'm going to turn the saturation down as well. And I'm going to push OK, and I'm actually going to turn the opacity down a little bit. Because they're eyebrows, and you kind of want to see the skin underneath. You don't want them too bright. So let's just have a look. I really personally don't care for the color of her lips, so I do want to kind of go in and adjust that some. And I believe that's layer 9, and it's not. So layer 8. Yes, layer 8. So at layer 8, I'm going to go back and I'm going to adjust it again because I just, the color, I just don't like it. I feel like it needs to be more red. And it's not. And it, it, it's just, I can actually turn the saturation up a little bit better so I can see it better.
And that's more orange, and I don't want it orange. And I don't want it purple. I kind of want a sweet spot in between, like, that neon pink. I don't want neon pink, like, bubblegum pink. Um... Don't want green. <laughs> Don't know why I did that. Mm. Okay. I'm going to reset that color. All right. So if I go all the way this way, it's blue. And all the way this way should be like a bluish green, too. Okay. And that's a little bit better. I kind of like it a little bit brighter. There. So, this is our picture. Um, we could go in and do our earrings. Let's do that right quick so we can call this a finished picture. And I need to do the background. So, let's do her earrings. Mm -hmm. We're going to zoom to her earrings. And they're very, very small. So I probably will use like a four, and it's going to be a very sharp edge. So I got to turn my opacity up so you can actually see this. All right, and the other. All righty. You all know the drill. You go to color, hue, and saturation. We know that gold is kind of down on this end. I don't know how I got that to skip so fast when I want it to. It don't ever do it. <laughs> so it's kind of like a orangey gold I guess and we're going to turn the saturation down some and we're going to bring the lightness up so let's kind of zoom out and see how this looks that's too far out winter. that's not bad could go a little more saturation I guess maybe like that and Maybe a little brighter. Make them a, a little that that more looks more like an antique gold, but that's okay. We could adjust that some. That's more green. You just kind of have to play with that when you do it like this. But the other option is actually picking your own color, which you could do that too. All right, guys. So let's get our background colored. And to me, the background's one of the easier things to do. Mm, alrighty. So we're going to start a new layer. Push OK. Your opacity needs to be all the way up. Size of your brush can be a little bigger. I go with about what this size is. So let's turn my hardness up. Force. And it's not going to show up real well because this background is super, super light, which is fine. And I don't worry about coloring these little hard, these one little piece of strands of hair. When you first start, you stress out about these one little strands of hair. How am I going to get these one little strands of hair? You know, because I know they need to be blonde or brown or whatever. And the thing is, is if you hold up one single strand of hair at a distance, it's very hard to see the color. You're not going to be able to see that color. As much as you might think you could, you can't. Unless you're right up on it, you're actually not going to be able to see those. And if you try to color them, they're going to look funny. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. And I'm coloring all over the place because I'm having a hard time seeing it because it's so bright. That's all right. I will go back and adjust this. 
and clean up when I get done, when it'll be easier to see. And this is part of the reason that I use these bright colors, because even on this background, I'm like, did I miss that spot? It's really hard to tell. So I'm going to go to my eraser and try to clean up some of this. Other. Oh, I need to turn my opacity up on my back on my eraser. Or it's not going to erase much of anything. And the Oscar trees is much back. Much of the background is not going to show up over here anyway, so it's not probably going to be a big deal. So we're going to go to colors, hue saturation, and we're just going to adjust to a color that we like or that we feel looks good with this image. It's definitely not green. I don't like how this looks right here, so I want to color on this and kind of help it blend a little bit because it's looking real harsh right here and a little bit right there. Okay, so let's try to adjust this again. And that looks a little better. One more place. And get that cleaned up. And then we're going to go to colors. Hue saturation. We're going to adjust our background color. And I try to stick away from colors that are similar to the skin tone because it drowns your subject out. And you kind of want to help bring them forward, not drown them out. So pick your color, pick something you like. I kind of like it better white, honestly, but we're going to pick a color for this. Maybe like this. I don't like it that light, though. I want to bring that down some. I think it would look better. I don't know, I keep coming back to that one color, so maybe that's the color that I should do. And I'm going to turn the saturation down a little bit because I don't want it that brilliant. And I'm going to push OK. So when I get done with this image and I'm ready to post this on the Teach Me to Color group or on Facebook or wherever you want to do it, just save it to send it to somebody that you did this image to. Um, you do need to do the teeth. I'm sorry, guys. One more layer. And I will let you be done. All right, so let's do, even though our teeth are probably white, we should always color them because if not, they're going to kind of stand out and they're going to look a, like a gray color. So I'm going to take my brush down really small, and I'm just going to go in here and kind of, I don't want it that harsh, though. And I'm going to take, take my post opacity down some, so I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to kind of color these. And most people, even movie stars whose teeth are white, they're going to be kind of a kind of a yellowy tint. It's more on the yellow side than it is the white side. Not like a bright. We're going to turn that all the way up. It's not like a noticeable yellow, but they are a lot more yellow than they are white. And I'm going to turn the saturation down because we don't want them like super yellow. It's going to look weird if you do. And I'm going to kind of clean up these edges where we kind of got on top a little bit. And that looks better. So I'll zoom out. And now you're ready to save. So what you're going to do with this, if you try to save this, let's just try to save it and I can kind of show you. Save as. It's going to try to save this as an XCF file. And that is... That's going to save your layers and all that, but it's not going to help you when you get ready to post to things like Facebook. So, what we need to do is export as, and it allows you to change this file name 
and it'll save it as a JPEG. So I want to just put color behind this and that'll let me know that it's colored and I'm going to export it to my desktop and I'm just going to push export and it's going to say what quality I want this image. I'm going to push 100% and I'm going to push export. I could have went through and put makeup on but I'm just showing you all the basics today. So let's close this down and I'm just going to reopen this image so that you can see it somewhere else besides the program it's a little bigger and it's easier to see. All right, so that is our tutor tutorial for GIMP. If you have any questions, um, just go ahead and post them on the group or send me a message and I'll be happy to answer them for you. I hope this helps a lot with the questions that you did have and the problems that you were having with GIMP. Maybe it makes it a little bit easier for you. Y'all have a good night.